let me sort of give you my stream of consciousness. I've got a few things that I can show you, um, a couple of videos, and and we can just kind of work our way through this material, which gives you a, it should give you a foundation about what's really happening and and why it's happening and how, and how long it's been happening so that you can sort of eliminate the idea that this is maybe just, you know, quack science or science fiction, but that it's actually real. So I think the first part of any kind of a legal argument, if you're in court, is to establish your case, right? So I, I, I want to I want to just take you through a few things that happened to me in the last few weeks that pertain okay. to exactly what you're talking about. And one of them obviously has to do with, um, well, the inner looking glass, shameless plug, of course, my new webinar, but that's about the inner looking glass that has to do with our pineal gland. I'm going to plug it for you. Link in description. You got to see this, the inner looking glass, Frank's webinar. Right. I highly recommend it because I put so much work into it. And there's not really a lot of comparative courses, you might say, out there that kind of break it down like this. But uh, recently what happened is that because, you know, part of that process of the pineal gland has to do with the hippocampus, um, I was talking to you know, my, my, our famous friend, Dieter Burrs, the, the biophysicist in Germany. And he had just done an interview with this guy called Michael, Dr. Michael Nails, right? And Michael Nails is somebody who's broken down the idea of, um, he's talking about the hippocampus, which is that part of your brain, which helps, which connects directly to the pineal gland which is the part that makes pictures, right? So he had he's published a couple of books. I'll put it up on the screen. You can kind of see it. This is in German. It's called, he's famous in German as being kind of on the fringe because he put a book out called Humans in, in a State of Zombiness, like zombie state, right? The Indoctrinated Brain, right? These are some of the materials that he was putting out recently. And essentially, you know, and for those who want to know what the hippocampus looks like, it's it's this part, kind of these two little lobes on either side of your brain, really a small uh, percentage of your brain, really. But what's very, very important about the hippocampus, and, and which is what shocked me about what Nails said, is he said, well, first I'll say what the hippocampus does. It takes the, it grows new cells every single day, which are called, he calls them index neurons. And these index neurons are there for you to absorb new information every single day. And in a normal functioning healthy human being, at the end of that day, those cells at the end, when you go to bed at night, the hippocampus takes the information from those cells and puts it into long-term storage. It's kind of like taking it out of um, RAM and putting it into the hard drive. And so the first part of that process is putting it on, onto the, into, into the cerebral cortex, all that gray matter you have in your brain, the majority of it. And the last part that happens is that it begins to help your brain make associations. So you associate what you freshly learned with what you have previously stored. And that's why they call it rapid eye movement because your eyes are trying to figure all the different connections out. And so your brain is making all the connections and it's making all the connections. And then, you know, you go to sleep at some point and it's like you rest. The next day you get up, what does your hippocampus do? Well, it grows new ones, right? New fresh index neurons starts to process all over again. And this carries on through all of your life. Well, what scared, what freaked me out about Nails is that he said he's done a lot of research and they found out that in the last three or four years, people's people aren't growing index cells anymore. Their hippocampus is shutting down. <laughs> so what does that mean, That's right? Crazy. Right. What does it mean? It means, well, the hip, like if you're making pictures and associations, you're developing higher consciousness, ethical you know, concepts, concepts about relationship between things. You're, you're, uh, you're exploring emotional states, right? You're into accountability and lessons learned. And, you know, they, they studied it on squirrels. Squirrels do it every year and there's shrink again in spring. They do it when they hide chestnuts because they need to figure out where the hell they hide, they hit all the chestnuts so that they can survive. But in the spring when they don't need the hiding places, they, it shrinks again. But we, ours isn't supposed to shrink. It's supposed to keep growing. So that makes you ask yourself, what like what are people without a hippocampus doing? They're functioning, they're taking information in, and they're all they're doing is they're reacting to the same pattern and they're reflecting exactly back because there's no connection to any kind of long-term memories in their brain. So they're just putting it right back out there. They're not even thinking anymore. Right? This isn't real you know, thinking. You know, that that's been just my observation. 
um, this reactionary state, not no real thought, no real contemplation, no real analysis, no real going deeper. It's just literally an emotional reaction to what they see on the surface and then moving forward. And I kind of, I mean, among many factors, I just felt like all the scrolling and the watching of videos and the shorts and whatnot uh, prevents that from even happening. Exactly. Because by the time you could have thought about it, you're just scrolling past right. the next thing. You're, you're past it. You're past it. And the, and the real, I guess the ultimate part, the, uh, the, the most dangerous part of that process, and then I'll be done with nails, but the most dangerous part, he said, is that when you are put into a state of fear and you're in shock and, and, and absolute panic, what do you do when your hippocampus isn't able to process? Well, it actually overwrites what's already stored in the gray matter. It bypasses this reflective process altogether, and it really literally deletes the hard drive, if I want to give it an analogy. So what's happening, and, and not only that, but they figured out that women who are pregnant that have no functioning hippocampus, they pass that along to the next generation. So the kids come into the world already in a state of fear, and they and they basically perpetuate and amplify that concept constantly. So this is when he was talking about that, I was like, my God, right? It makes so much sense. But but there must be more to the thing. And this is so this is where it gets kind of really like off the ranch, right? This is this is where, you know, and there's this guy called Eugene Irvin. He's a researcher. He's been kind of hovering around my Facebook and he's got some really volatile information and statements he drops every now and then. And he, he's been, he was pinging me on some information that I had to check out about the looking glass, right? So I checked it out and I want to share this with you because when I saw this, um, it put the pieces for a lot of things together for me here. So I'm going to just share this with you right now. It's a really short little blurb I put together. You deserve the truth, but big tech does not want you to hear it. So we built our own inspired platform on the inspiredchannel.com. To watch the full video and more, just click the link in the video description or the pinned comment.